Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I want to answer that question. Alexandra, the, the sharpshooter, simple in the game, was or is or was he actually worth your resources? Yeah, with the buff that he got recently, has that kind of taken him up now to a really strong champion in the game? Or should he just sit in people's vaults? I've had a ton of messages of people saying, oh, I can't believe they just had him as a vault lord. I personally, before I've tested him, don't think that that's what he is. But we're going to test him out properly today and um, just do a showcase of him. Just to so you can gather an idea of, is he strong enough? And the great thing for me is that I've got him on the free to play as well. And it's great for me to be able to test him properly on my main before I then make decisions on my free to play where I've got way less resources in terms of using someone like this guy. So let's go through his kit quickly then. So Alexandra the sharpshooter. Um, as I said in other videos, I really wish they'd given him a funky passive. Like something cool within his passive that just kind of makes you think differently because his kit's quite basic. It's quite basic. Sometimes basic's good. You know, people that are new to the game which, which will be people that have just got this guy. Um, honestly, really complicated kits can put people off a game. So for someone who's new to the game, that's looking at this guy's kit, it's kind of like, right, what's going on? A1, they increased his chance to freeze up to 50 um, against all champions, all enemies, 75 against his two factions. Honestly, for me, I'm just going to ignore the two factions that exist. That's a Brucey bonus if you face them, but you just want to be kind of looking at what's the base level. 50% chance to freeze on an A1, it's actually good. It's actually a good thing. Um, it's like that spot, RNG, can I just take someone out of the game when I need to? So I don't mind this actually for an A1 ability. I think it's pretty good. The A2 uh, kind of needs to be booked. You need to, to book it ideally to get the most benefit from it. But if you book it, 100% chance to put drop defense is solid. On my free to play, I'll be honest here, I probably won't book this champion ever because legendary books are very hard to come by. So you know, if you're watching this as a newer player, just consider legendary books are very difficult to get. So you want to be absolutely certain that that champion needs to be booked. Now, a 75% chance of putting your decreased defense is okay. 100% is a lot better, obviously, because you've got a, a guaranteed drop defense going out there. But for what I'm, I'm thinking to use this guy for on the free to play, which is mainly... Pushing right through faction wars, a uh, certain affinity, um, certain affinity kind of setups for, you know, different fights when I need a, a particular magic affinity drop defense. Um, but probably the bigger thing is once I'm kind of finished using him for faction wars, I think he might just be a nuke. I think he might absolutely just be the nuke champion with this A2. So sometimes you, a bit like Astralon, Astralon in this game. He's got cool debuffs, but you can actually just build him as a powerhouse who's going to blow stuff up as well. And I'll show that today. But yeah, if you want to use him effectively across the whole game, and if he's your only drop defense champion, you know what? It's, it's not a bad one to book, but I would probably only book this A2. Yeah, but it's not a bad one. Three turn cooldown on a decreased defense. It's a shame they didn't slot in the weaken um, for every faction. If they did, then this guy would be absolutely broken good. That's the difference. So. Therefore, if you're against Orkin Ogren tribes, he is broken good. Yeah, AoE drop defense and weaken is one of the best skills in the game, especially on a three-turn cooldown. But it's a shame they've only got it for two factions. Even if they change this, instead of just two, I know it's, it's meant to be kind of like the lore side of things, but if they just changed it to like the whole Galen Pact, then it's a third of all, all our enemies we face. You know, it, it feels better. But just having it as two factions for me is a little bit weak. Uh, let's go back to what we're looking at. So yeah, so this ability though is his cannon. This is his, his nuke and we'll show that later, but it is a good ability. And then the A3 attacks an enemy, removes all buffs, removes all buffs before attacking when fighting these two factions again. This one for me, they sh if they weren't going to put a cool passive on, it should, that, that kind of faction bit there just shouldn't exist. It's just, just, it just should happen. Yeah. Because in this faction, we do have already a Royal Huntsman, who, by the way, is a great champion. He's a, he's a great champion. People overlook him because he used to be pretty trash. Now he's a great champion. He kind of does the same thing as this guy. AoE drop defense, but doesn't need to be booked to get the drop defense out there. A 
single target A3, which is an absolute cannon, and then an A1, which has got an okay ability on it. He's kind of the same champion in the same faction. It's, it's a bit weird. But if you don't have a Huntsman and you don't have a Tayrell built out, I think this guy, because we've all got him, is going to be solid. Um, he's also got accuracy in all battles. So again, if you're a newer player, uh, you need accuracy to land all your abilities in the game. Anything which is red like this, applying a debuff, needs accuracy. Anything where you're trying to reduce someone's turn meter, anything you're doing to someone else, if it doesn't say cannot be resisted, you absolutely need accuracy to do it. Okay? So having an accuracy aura early in the game is actually is huge. 60 accuracy to every champion in your game is huge pretty much everywhere. So, you know, if you're trying to fight early Doom Tower, this is big. So we're going to build him out. I'm going to show him as an absolute cannon first. Uh, and then we'll just kind of throw him into some different content. And I'll, I'll show you how I would use him. Um, and for me, this is also a decision around how much should I burn into him for my free-to-play account as well. Just want to have a quick, um, just make people aware, really. We're running our Christmas giveaway at hellhades.com. Um, so every week, come back every week and you can get involved here. 2021 Christmas giveaways. All you need to do is come into here and there's a whole bunch of stuff where you can enter. So as long as you've been on, on these different things, you get different entries. Um, and every week, as I say, there is a different uh, prize. So it actually tells you the winners for last week here. So Paul P, Brad, everyone here, the, the one will get um, emailed with their prizes. And there's a whole bunch of stuff from uh, going on a, a Hell Hades thumbnail, which is going to come from the previous week, getting some merch, coaching sessions from the... The, uh, the team that do takeovers for free. There's a whole bunch of stuff and we've got those going on again this week. Um, you've only got a few days to go. There's, there's not as many entries. There's 4,000 entries for the week one. I think we've got a couple of thousand entries so far. So it's actually a pretty decent chance of winning something if you put your, your hat in the ring. Come back to this, get involved um, and you might get yourself some Brucey bonus prizes. So one thing I would say here with Alexander is... Um, like all of his books, so A1 in booking is just more damage. So pretty much anything he would have done, I'm going to times that damage by 1.2. His A2 is kind of, a, is that is an area where you want books to land because you do want the extra chance to put the debuffs out and the extra cooldown is massive on this skill. This is his main ability. The A3, you just gain more damage again. So booking him is good, like with every champion in the game, pretty much, apart from a few, but not essential. Um, the main thing that the books do give you are that A2 extra cooldown. So if I was doing this on my free-to-play and I was going to book him, I would literally be saying, right, I need five, no, sorry, four books into that skill. I'll put four out there first and try my luck. And actually, we've got a couple into that skill. You kind of don't really want books into this A1, so it's a skill you're going to use less. So at this point here, I'd be like, right, I only got three spots now. I'm going to try my three spots and just hope that I get lucky. now." Obviously, it's totally RNG. So it might be like in this situation where you just end up burning all your books and you'd be like, Benek. but sometimes you can just book the skill you want. It happens on the rarest of occasions like this. So we've got now Max booked here. This one I didn't fully book and this one did. All right, so I saved one book. And to be fair, at this point, I might as well just grab the cooldown in that one on my main account. But if on the free-to-play I'd managed to land five books into the A2, I would stop. I would not put any more books into him one, like 100%. There's no way I would. So in terms of mastery, then there's a number of things you could do. I'm going to show you first like a full nuke um, Alexander or simple. I'm just going to call him simple, I think. I'm going to show you first a full nuke, whereas I would just kind of make sure I take Heart of Glory, Ruthless Ambush, uh, bring it down, and then bring Helm Smasher in for more damage. Um, if you're not booking this champion, then you do want to take Sniper to get a better chance of landing the decreased defense. Yes, yeah, so you get an extra 5% here. It means he's going to be an 80 instead of a 75. It is a good ability if you're not going to book this guy out. And then depending on what you're doing with him, Master Hexer can be good as well to, uh, to put those decreased defense buffs on for longer. It doesn't do anything for your freeze though. Um, so this is kind of one angle of how you could run him. Um, you could also forget the support tree if you've got enough accuracy or if you're ignoring accuracy and bring the defense tree in and kind of come down this route. 
Yes, you've got a chance for counter attacks with retribution. You've got resurgent, which is a great mastery for anything PvP. Uh, and then you've got some kind of damage reduction stuff at the top here as well, in case you take a hit. But this for me would be one option for a kind of nuke build. Um, probably the better option would be the defense tree generally if you're going full nuke. So let's have a quick run through where I'm going to build them then. So if I'm going full damage, I want attack ring because every, every ability stands from attack with attack percentage rolls on the substat. For my amulet, I'm going to want to go crit damage as my main stat. And then, I mean, the idea was to get some accuracy into his build anyway because the drop defense is always going to be a good ability and the freeze will as well. So you kind of want to be going with a good accuracy roll. Um, let's move me out of the way a minute. Good accuracy roll on a crit on a crit damage piece and then again if you're going damage you kind of want to take an attack banner if you're going for accuracy pieces you know to land stuff then you want accuracy as the main stat but if you go attack with speed and attack percent it's kind of like your dream combo uh something like this so attack percent and speed together and that's kind of where i would sit the jewelry so we start to pick up a bit of speed we're picking up more damage um and it kind of gives us a good feel for what we need to do after that. You can see here, my accuracy is actually already, <laughs> because my, my Great Hall is strong. Because my Great Hall is strong, I get 80 there. Because I get um, a bit of accuracy from the Masteries I've, I've chosen, and my Faction Guardians give me some accuracy as well. I'm like blasting 160 accuracy with no trouble whatsoever on my main. So I can actually build him as a full cannon on my main. And still be able to get the accuracy I need. On my free to play. I would be more like 30 accuracy here in the Great Hall. Um, and I'm in the way. 30 in the Great Hall. And I would have nothing in Faction Guardians at all. So I would actually only be on about like what. You know 100-ish or something here. So I would definitely be using an accuracy banner on my free to play account. Um, so yeah. Let's just put him into some savage gear and see what he can do. I'm actually going to use the optimizer to do this. So if anyone has got a PC with Windows on it or a Mac, you can run a Windows kind of install as well. Um, just go into optimizer, raid optimizer, press home and it gets you to this page and then just download the archive. And basically you can install the raid optimizer or the Hell Hades optimizer from here. This tool is so good if you're able to use it on a PC in terms of doing out your builds. I've got a load of videos on this. So I'm not going to run through it now, but... Um, in terms of optimizing builds, it's actually crazy. I'll, I'll use it here so you can kind of see what I do. On well, this one, I'm just going to go into champion, find the one that I want. Let's reset. It's always good to hit the reset before you get going because it will save what you were doing last time. Uh, I'm writing in simple and it's not simple. Uh, Alex. Alexander. Alexander, right. Okay, so optimize artifacts. What I can do here is I can just kind of tell it what I want. So I can say use equipped artifacts, yes or no. Uh, include locked artifacts. So some champions, uh, if I go back into select champions, some champions I can lock. So these are locked, um, which means that it's not going to steal any gear from my kind of main arena teams or main dungeon teams. Just see my Trunders in there with my best gear on. So it's not going to steal any of this gear, which means I'm going to be using my leftover gear, basically, or gear that's on champions that I don't use a lot. So just go back into it. on here optimize and then what i'm going to tell it is i want to go for a damage build i want to assume that i'm against a arena defense so we're saying three and a half k defense if we were just running against sort of normal um dungeon mobs which we will do as well this is a good amount of defense to put in here because it tells you that you're going to want to try and take people's uh, defense down um, and savage gear becomes better then in terms of damage for that i'm going to tell it 180 speed is a good speed for a nuka 100% crit rate. Again, if you're a, a newer player, you might be running at 170 speed. Depends what your gear can do. But you do, I would say, really, any champion in your teams, if you're newer, 170 speed kind of becomes a minimum unless you're doing something quite quirky. Um, and then I just want to optimize for damage. I can select whatever I want here. Balanced is more like if I'm trying to get uh, a high speed or highest accuracy away. Survivability if, I, if I'm building a tank, really. But damage for everyone else. Put your 100% crit rate in. And then hit your optimize and all it'll do is run through and basically it'll ping the highest damage build that you can get to the top yeah so it's working through now you see beforehand it just flicked away there i had a 6k attack here it is 6k and then i had like a much higher crit damage that would have been non-savage gear 
Okay, and then what it's done is it's realized... Now, hold on a minute. He's got Savage, and Savage is stronger. So some of the crit damage is and that come down, but my damage output actually went up. Yeah, so that's, that's the way it's running this. Um, and what it's doing is it's working a calculation out to say, what's the best blend of attack and crit damage together? Okay, so that's, that's what it does for you. If you're a premium user, you actually get this skills tab, and it says, this is how much damage change you're going to get from the deer swap so if you already built them and you'll see the green numbers in here this is like the damage change which again is a pretty cool thing to see because it's like is this build better or not um but there you go this one actually gives me 210 accuracy as well which is awesome so I hit the view and it's kind of like picking out the different pieces that i can put on them and all i need to do is go and find these pieces from my champions in game and equip them and away we go. Right then, here he is in full cannon mode. As I said, I didn't strip like my best gear off of my champions, but it is strong gear. So we've got 6.1k attack, 230% crit damage, 100% crit rate in Savage with Cruel. So I'm ignoring 25% of enemy defense here. I'm ignoring another 5% of enemy defense here, which should mean that if he's strong now since his buff, he's done an absolutely blow everybody up this is a full damage build uh let's give him a try so i'm gonna use my normal kind of damage test team um because he's got that accuracy aura even in this type of build where he's full damage i can push another 60 accuracy into his kit and everyone else's and it actually means that he's still going to be landing any of his abilities i want him to so you know the, the fact that i can punch his accuracy up so easily is kind of nuts honestly so here we go we're putting all the debuffs out there on them so what we're doing, we're poisoning us, we're poisoning them. Gives me 20% more damage from Gurptuck, another 20% from Bad L. We're putting increased attack on us, which gives him more damage. We're dropping defense and weakening on them, more damage. Everything here is about nuke. And then let's just slow this down. First, let's see what his animations are like, but also, is he a cannon? So animation's pretty cool. 200k to 270, I think that was, across the board. It's, I mean, it's... So one shot a wave is strong. So he's up there. Ethos level of damage. Astralon, Ethos, all of those guys. He can absolutely be your arena nuker. Yeah, that's that's where he's at. He's up there with the top tier. Um, you've got Trunda sits on her own table. Um, now and then she's kind of like, Magna, come and have a look. Like she's he's he's up there as well as a funky one, but um, He's pretty much in that group of Ray, Astralon, Ethos, um, Candy for damage output. He doesn't have as, as cool a kit as some of those, but for pure damage, he's up there with that group. Let's just have a look at what the rest of his skills can do as well. So debuffs out there again. What was interesting there is you noticed, uh, hopefully, that this guy didn't have a decreased defense on. He still one shot him through that because of his savage gear and stuff. So that's actually kind of nuts. To do that is kind of nuts. Uh, let's do the same again and just see what his A3 is like. A3, let's do it against a defensive dude. Pop 358. <laughs> That's pretty damn hard, guy. That is a, a smack. That is definitely a smack. Uh, let's see what his A1 does as well. So I feel like this might be the use, use for this guy. It's just like pure cannon. Absolute nuke machine. Um, let's just hit one over here for a minute. A1 then, see what this does. 225, yeah. So, so this guy is a, an absolute smack. Yeah, if you don't have... If your best nuka right now is Kale, you could build this guy 100% as your best nuking machine for your account. And that will carry through, right through, like, top gold four. He does enough damage. Yeah, he does enough to deal with any of those guys. Let's just see what that Raw Huntsman would do in the same spots. Because this is the test, I guess, for the faction. You know, is um uh, not against this affinity though, because it will be squiffy. Let's do it here. This is the test for this faction. You know, is is he worthy? Is he worthy to come into this faction? This guy gives us increased attack for spirit champions. So he's boost, boosting his own attack as well. We use both of their personal auras. It's only fair, right? So same setup again. And then this guy, I guess Tayrell could be in the same mix, honestly. 
Tayrol won't hit as hard as these guys, but he's defensive, so he's easier to keep alive. But let's see what this dude does as the Royal Huntsman, one level back. Huntsman is doing considerably less, considerably less on his A2, albeit he's not in savage gear, but that's still a like, considerable reduction of damage. Yeah. So people just saying, like, is he straight up the same as Huntsman, but um, yeah, but a weaker version. No, he's not, but the Huntsman does 100% put out that decreased defense without books. That's the main difference. Uh, and then if we were cycling back through again, the Huntsman's got an obnoxious A3. Yeah. Pop the A3. 447 on the A3 because it ignores defense. So it's one of the hardest hitting abilities in the game. So they're both, they're a bit different. But for me, Alexandra is a nuke, he's a cannon. And I think that the way I've built him here is how most people should build him. These type of masteries, this type of setup, if you can get accuracy into his kit, great. And what I'm going to do now is all I'm going to switch out on him is his banner. Yeah, so I'm going to give him the accuracy to do his job. Albeit, you know, as a lead, he kind of puts the accuracy in there himself in this build. But yeah, we're going to put some accuracy into his kits. And then you can kind of just see what he's able to do. Uh, maybe we'll just use this one here. When he's got the accuracy and I've kind of for, for done a bit of damage. I guess also, yeah, let's be fair, like if, if most people that are using him, you'd probably also be switching to an HP chest because you want to be able to stay alive as well. So let's grab an HP chest as well. Yeah, and then he's a bit slow now. So we're going to want speed boots because he's now going to be our debuffer. So, you know, you'd throw in some speed boots on him. And then all of a sudden you've got someone that can do a couple of jobs. Let's just make sure I'm not completely crucifying his build. Uh, that's about good. Yeah, so all of a sudden he's down to what? 3.9k attack, 224 crit damage, but got loads of accuracy now to do his job elsewhere. And that's probably more realistic as to, you know, how people would build him in terms of, you know, you still want him to be able to come in and set you up. Yes, yeah, so you want him to be able to set up your damage. So, you know, you'll be taking her out, taking him out. Let's just run a proper team. So, yeah, something a bit more like this. You've got a kind of team to get you to the boss. So, you got Poisoner to deal with the boss. So, he could come in as your lead and give the accuracy in, in all areas uh, in, for your whole team, sorry, to kind of boost your chance of landing stuff. And really, you're, you're relying on him to drop defense against the whole wave whilst doing a good amount of damage. And then everyone else just kind of comes in with their crowd control and their nukes and basically gets the job done yeah so um i think what i'll do i'll let this play through so you can kind of see how it works um we're going to put some music on from soundstripe soundstripe are a, a sponsor of the channel so you can get royalty free music i use it in all my streams and some of my videos as well um it's actually really cool if you're just looking for kind of backing music for videos or streams that type of thing uh, but you can use my code below hell hades and you will get yourself 15 percent off Fantastic. Let's let's play it through. Here we go now. Uh, <laughs> I really thought Aox does a better job of putting poisons out than he does, but really, it's terrible. It's terrible, like, chance to put poisons out there with his A1. I thought it was better than it was. Um, anyway, so what's, what's going on? We've got 
maximum damage from, from Alexander here. So this is fine. But really, what he's done in this wave setup is the same as another 30 decreased defense champions can do. Yeah, and you could easily find cheaper ones to book out and stuff. Yeah, so you know, if you're a brand new player, you can go and farm War Maiden. And she does 100% chance to drop defense when booked with rare books. Yeah, on a three turn cooldown, same skill. So all he's bringing different to that is damage. Yeah, he's bringing harder hits. Uh, there's no boss in the game that you can freeze. Yeah, so, so the freeze doesn't give you anything more. And the kind of still buff things or the remove buff thing is a bit too situational. So what you've just seen there for the dragon fight, we're going to get exactly the same in all of these fights. Yeah, all of the fights will be the same. So Ice Golem and Dragon, he's going to be solid for. The Waves for Finite is going to be solid for, but not really the boss. And um, Spider, he's going to set up damage dealers or, or be your damage himself. So he can do those things. But he's not exceptional at any of it. He just hits hard whilst doing it. Um, for Faction Wars, he is going to be a great champion in terms of dropping defense, laying some slams in, all that type of stuff. But he's not exceptional. Again, if you've already got a Tayrail built, I probably wouldn't build him out. Um, so for me, the only kind of use case really comes from being your arena full damage. Arena full damage dealer. And he comes into any lineup. Uh, in fact, I'm going to switch him back to his full damage build. He'll come into any lineup and he'll be your nuke. So for my setups here, he would actually come in as my kind of trunder spot. So Trunda would just come out of here and he would go in and he would be my cannon. Yes, but Trunda is absolutely the best champion in the game for this. He would be in the tier of other champions that can do it as well. Yeah, and um, and he'll do it really well up until kind of high-end gold four. Uh, so we're just going to push her back. Block out everything they do. Pretty busted team, this one. I don't even have a decreased defense here. This is this is kind of what Trunda does, yeah? She doesn't need decreased defense. All she needs is an opportunity. And then she showcases what she can do. And that's what we're interested to see if he does the same, really. Without decreased defense, nowhere near blowing them up. It's unfair. Blew everyone up apart from her. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of the difference. Yeah, Trunda, no decreased defense, just blows people up. Even with those crazy stats, Savage Deer, Cruel Deer, doesn't blow people up enough. And if actually, let's just quit this out, throw Trunda back in the mix there, kind of see the difference. I couldn't do anything about the Swift Parry proc, that just happens. Yeah, so I wouldn't have been able to, to change that anyway. But we go through the same kind of setup. I guess this time they're all locked out anyway, so I'm just going to speed us up through. Push her back. Okay, so Trunda now comes in with her A3. And it's kind of like, no problem. You're all dead. You're all very dead. And, you know, that's an easy win. So you kind of see the difference between the best and the second tier. And it... it you know, at my level of arena, it's, it's quite a lot of difference. But for someone who is lower down, he still becomes an extremely strong damage dealing nuka in the arena. All right, so we're going to go against a, a kind of tanky style team here. Um, high team power. It's going to be a solid kind of unit team. I'm going to run him alongside a drop defense champion this time. So you can kind of see what he does in a more standard team comp, albeit... This warlord is quick. I'm in trouble. Okay, it's not so quick. So I can sleep, pop, I can boost my own attack with Duchess, drop their defense. And then you do have to be aware like he's got affinity issues here. So he's got an affinity issue against force. There's some force champions that you're going to be facing, but there's a lot of magic and a lot of spirit generally in the arena. So his, his affinity is not too bad. And then we would A2 in here. Let's just see what he does against quite a tanky team. I mean, it's sitting them down nicely. We've got a weak hit here because of affinity, but she would be dead if it wasn't for Swift Parry as well. And, you know, that's, that's a solid, solid nuke. Yeah, that's as, as good as you're going to get. 
um, apart from a trunda or someone who hits maybe twice if you if you need that second hit. So we can just strip all this away. We're going twice because of Kaima. Come at them again. There's no revives from that, my friends. And then everyone's having a rest. So yeah, high damage. He's going to be solid as a nuka in the arena. But for general content, he's good. But there's a lot of people that do the same job, which won't cost you anywhere near as much in legendary books to get the job done well. So it's a tricky one, really. Will I build him on my free to play? Yeah, I think I will. I actually think that I will build him on the free to play for faction wars. But I can't see that he's immediately going to just come into all of my teams, which is kind of what you would hope for from a, um, you know, from a, a kind of new legendary champion with, with those abilities. I've already got decreased defense champions built out. So he really becomes my second best nuka or maybe my new best nuka in the arena. But he will absolutely be in my faction war team. Even at level 50, he could be in my faction war team and do a good job for me. Yeah, drop in defense and all that type of stuff. So he's good. He's not crazy, but he is up there as a top tier nuka. So there you go, guys. I've been Hell Hades. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you later.